Uh, okay, so just here a very kind of an overview um, for Susan. Where are we? Here we go. So here is Susan Mann to tell us about Beyond Listing Secrets to Local Search with Google Business Profile. And Susan would really like to remind us that the Google Business Profile is the most underutilized tool to help get your business get found on local search. So in the 20 minutes she's gonna to speak today, she will touch on how to optimize your account, why reviews matter, how to get them, and new features that have rolled out this year. Susan Mann is the owner of Local Herbert Agency. She's based primarily in Phoenix, but comes back to Denver now and again. She's been in digital marketing for 15 years and has a passion for demystifying the smoke and mirrors of marketing, making available all of the tools that the big brands use. She really, as a local, small, her local Herbert Agency, <clears throat> she provides big marketing for small business. And I want to get you set up here on speaker view. So we have that going. So take it away, Susan Mann. Yay. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much, Joyce. I know we did this many, many moons ago. Gosh, like three plus years ago. So Pretty much cool. has changed. So <laughs> I'm uh, delighted to be here. It's lovely to see so many familiar faces, but also to meet some new people. So thank you for having me. Without further ado, and uh, Joyce, I'll ask you to start the timer. And when I get close, just blurt it out. Okay, um, gotcha. First of all, I'll just check in. Can everyone see my screen okay? My presentation. Yes, great. Um, <laughs> Normally I would put this in speaker view, but I might jump around and uh, we're definitely gonna have uh, enough time for questions. And I will try and touch on some things that I heard when you all were introducing yourselves, but without further ado, here we go. Um, so uh, I believe it was Jan who mentioned, yes, at the end of 2022, Google My Business, the beloved GMB, uh, is now called Google Business Profile. Um, before I get into some technicalities about that, I just want to say an overview of why we should all care, if we are business owners, about Google and Google Business Profile. On Google, there are 8.5 billion searches a day and 92% of search volume globally. And yes, there are other ways to search, and I would be remiss in my educational duties if I didn't say that if you're looking to reach 18 to 34 year olds, TikTok is your jam. Um, our young people are using it for search, for buying decisions and all kinds of things. Uh, so I did wanna just throw that in the mix, but today, of course, we're here to talk about Google Business Profile. So, Google Business Profile is the engine behind Google Maps. And it's a little confusing because there's the Google Maps app and then there's Google Business Profile. But trust me when I tell you they are inextricably intertwined. I want to touch on who Google Business Profile is for because there are some of you in your introductions that said, I'm not sure or I don't have one. And for some of you folks, this is for you. <laughs> And for some of you folks, it may not be, and I'll explain. So it's absolutely for brick and mortar businesses. If you have a location where customers, clients come in to do business, brick and mortar for sure. It is also for service-based businesses. So what's that? Let's say I'm a plumber and I go to people's homes in a specific service area, but I work out of my house and I don't want you, Mr. or Miss Consumer, showing up at my front door. You are allowed to hide your address and you are then known as a service-based business. And it is very important for you to tell Google in the Google Business Profile what your service areas are. Otherwise, you'll see a map of the U.S. or someplace you don't service, or maybe you got it right, but you should be very granular in that, and we'll go over how many, and et cetera, in a few moments. Here's who Google Business Profile is not for, 
And uh, I see a hand up, but uh, it may, I, I don't know, I can feel it now, or we can do a Q&A, Joyce, whatever you feel is appropriate. Jay, do you well, have some sort of logistic question or what's up? Well, my question was about what she's about to answer. It says not for a 100% online store. Uh, I think I tried to sign up for this once and they wanted to publish my home address and that's why I didn't use it. So I'm, I'm expecting that's probably what you're going to say. Yeah. Uh, well, general. actually, no, I, I think I said it. Maybe I didn't say it in the way you were looking to hear. And but beyond this, we'll do questions at the end. But go ahead so you can address Jay's question. You can hide your home address. There's a little button, a toggle that you can do that. So absolutely, yes, you can. Um, so Google Business Profile is not for a 100% online store. So Ada, if I, I remember correctly, you said you were brand new thinking about Etsy uh, and uh, unless you have a local presence and I'm going to use Lori Dubois as a fantastic example. So she has uh, a bead business. This is really, uh, it's e-commerce, but she physically does trade shows in her area in Colorado. So that would be an online business, a, a product business with a local presence, A-OK. -okay. But if all you're doing is just online e-commerce, then Google Business Profile isn't for you. Now, there are ways around that, but I would rather <laughs> not talk about loopholes at this moment. Uh, OK, that, other... that answers my question. I'm a 100% online business. So uh, I responding to that, can I just ask a question? Is it possible for me to be able to listen to the recording replay at a future time so that I could listen to it when it would appropriate apply to my business? Oh, yes. And you know what? I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Susan, on this, but I should. That was my bad. I am recording this presentation, Ada. It will go on to my YouTube channel. I have a playlist just for speakers like Susan and others here at this meetup group. So it will, I will send that to you by the end of the week, if not okay. before that. You will have that and you can just keep that. It's Thank recorded you. to, um, it'll be, I transfer from the Zoom recording over to a YouTube video. Okay. And I don't know your YouTube um, channel. I'll, get, I'll send all that information in an email. Thank you so much. You Thank bet. you. You know, so I'll just sit for a little okay. bit. Yeah, so that's know. a logistics. Ticking. So, sure. Sure. Ticking. so I'm going to jump right in here. Okay. You can um, meet up the interruption. Thank you. So what you cannot do is, and this may break some hearts, but you cannot use a shared address on your Google business profile. And what I mean by that is a UPS store, uh, a US postal service box, or let's say you are sharing an office with someone and that someone actually has a, a business that's gets mail and there's a suite number like 101 and you sublet this 101 space, um, that is that is a no-go. It has to be a unique address. It cannot be a shared address. So I just wanted to lay some ground rules about that. I, um, I would also like to share with you why you should care about Google Business Profile. And uh, you'll see some graphs here that reference the old GMB, Google My Business. Uh, but this is some historical data that basically it almost doesn't matter if we're in 2021 or 2023. Google Business Profile is about a third of the pie chart, if you will, for being found locally. Uh, there are... I. I there's a lot of data here, but just trust me when I tell you that when people are doing, you know, best plumber near me uh, and or doing, you know, a search online on the desktop, this is why Google Business Profile is so important. Um, there's another reason why it's so important, and that is it is the most trusted review platform across all industries. And uh, this is probably seems like a, a good time. We're, we're gonna talk about reviews 
more in depth, uh, but to touch on one of DC's problems, DC, if they in the past had a relationship with one of the properties that you're now managing, you can't just get it erased from Google. It doesn't work like that. If the um, person leaving your review had no nexus or relationship to your business, that is something you can try and get removed. But my best advice to you would be um, respond to that those old reviews now that you've taken over the page and just say, we're so sorry you had this experience, but the building's under new management. Um, even though they're hideous reviews and some people troll, that's what they like to do in their spare time, uh, they really need to have a relationship to the business. All right. So here's the deal. If you are not on page one or page two of a Google search, unfortunately, you're a ghost. And uh, I say this many times in many places, and I don't mean to be disparaging about it, but most consumers have the attention span of a gnat. And what I mean by that is unless someone's going down a very deep rabbit hole, they are probably not going to keep scrolling to page 10 to find you. Consumers trust what they see on, in the old days it was page one, but I'm gonna say page one and page two. And so um, there are things that you can do to optimize your Google business profile. To that end, and no one wants to hear this, um, it is not a set it and forget it type of tool. And I should have said this earlier, but as uh, the folks who are entrepreneurs here, that's most of us, um, we know, okay, I have a, got to have a website. I need to set up social media, which should be pertinent to where my audience may be or may not be uh, because you're looking for folks in places that you didn't even think about or that's how people discover you. But the last, I don't know if you can see my hair color, but the last thing on the list, the redheaded stepchild is the Google business profile. It's an afterthought. You probably set up your business. You claimed it. And in DC's case, probably there was a video verification problem, which is a newer thing. Uh, but it is extremely important. So please don't let it be the redheaded stepchild. And the more you interface with this particular Google tool, the more Google will reward you and serve you up higher in the search results. Um, I don't know how many of us went to Entrepreneur School 101, but this is just stuff people won't tell you. Please, please, please manage your Google business profile. All right, so now let's touch on those differences between late 2022 and today. So unfortunately, and this is the bane of everyone's existence, the specific app for Google My Business has gone the wayside. It has been retired by Google. So now there are only two ways to manage your Google Business profile. And because <laughs> I like the big screen, uh, I would recommend using the desktop version and how you get there. And this can be the tricky part for some is most folks start off with having a Gmail for their business and you need to be in the appropriate Chrome browser that your Gmail is associated with. And if you type in business.google.com, you should see your Google business profile. The other way to do it is if you are in your uh, appropriate Chrome browser, there is a, lack for lack of a better description, a nine dot hamburger that is on the right hand side of your browser. And if you click on it, you should see my business being on the top line and the last one on the right hand side. So those are two ways. Another way and honestly, I never, ever, ever use the Google Maps app to manage anything because uh, the UI is, doesn't match. 
the desktop. There is one thing I'm going to share with you at the end where you definitely may want to play with this, but um, the Google Maps app is, is another way to do it. Uh, and this new situation as of 2023 is called NMX, New Merchant Experience. Not that maybe anybody cares to know that, but if you ever hear that acronym, that's what it is. So if you are on your desktop, you will see all of these widgets. And this is how you can manage your account. So edit profile is going to have everything from your business hours to a description of your business um, and uh, the category that your business is in. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the next slide and also your service area. And this is also where you'll see your address is hidden or not. Um, the review area, uh, you can read your reviews. There's another way to read your reviews if you have messages turned on. Um, adding photos. So this is a little misleading. Joyce, we actually addressed this uh, in a one-on-one -on -one not too long ago, but you can add videos now. We're gonna talk more about that momentarily. Performance, you can see how people are interacting with your profile. You can also see the keywords that people use as search terms to find your business, as well as how many direction requests did you get? How many calls did you get? How many website clicks did you get? How people are finding you? Uh, Google Maps, on, the, on mobile, on desktop. There's a lot of good granular data there. Um, edit products and services. I am going to recommend that even if you are a service provider, let's say doing coaching, there is nothing wrong with making products available, uh, having services, and I'll have a hot tip for you about services. If you take online bookings, you should have your link there. Um, Something else we'll talk about momentarily is you can now add social media links to your Google business profile. This is Brandy spanking new as of the last, I don't know, couple, three months. Um, Q&A. So this is probably the most overlooked area. Uh, I would love for you to think about your Q&A here as your website FAQ. Uh, but essentially, you can, as an entrepreneur, seed and answer your own questions. Mm -hmm. And these are going to be things that people would want to know about your business. So let's say you're a coach. Do you meet virtually or in person? Why? Yes, we blah, 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 blah. So um, if you have a web website FAQ, you could easily translate into the Q&A or just put on your thinking hat and say, what do people really want to know about my business? There already may be existing questions there as well, and I highly advise you to answer them. Um, and just going back on reviews um, when I was sharing some information with DC specifically, but this is for everyone. I implore you, if you have a Google business profile, Go read your reviews, all of them, the good, the bad, the ugly. They all need to have a response. Um, if it's just five stars and no comment, absolutely still respond to that. Thank you so much for your kind feedback. Um, if it's a horrible review, um, I like to take a deep dive and see, is someone like, is someone trolling this business? And you can actually see other reviews they've written and you can see, oh, they left some, they had something horrible to say about five businesses and none of them were in the same city and they did it on the same day. If it's something like that uh, and you're not clear if they had a, you know, really did business with you, you could be in the restaurant business and maybe not know, um, you could get kind of snarky. And, you know, these are these are the things that viral social things are made of. But you could say, like, yeah, uh, if you were a coffee shop, gosh, it seems like you woke up on the wrong side of the bed today because you also left reviews for blah, 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 blah. 
If you happen to be in Tempe, Arizona, we'd love to have you come in for a fresh cup of coffee to turn that frown upside down. I mean, yes, you can get snarky, or you could also say, we're terribly sorry you had this experience. We would love for you to reach out to us directly so we can make it right. The signal that that sends, whether it's they're a troll uh, or whether they truly had an accurate bad experience, you're signaling to people who are reading your reviews, because this is part of a purchase making decision other than images and things, you're showing that you care about your customers, your clients. So even if it's painful to do, uh, I highly recommend, or your attorney says don't, I highly recommend responding to all reviews. Now- Excuse me, Susan, I'd say you have about five minutes left now. That's, That's uh, adding all the time because of the Q, Q and A happened at the uh, front end. So it's it, it, it's actually 2.13, just so you know. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Um, I have starred ask for reviews because this is where you are going to find the review link to ask folks for reviews. It should be on your invoices. It should be uh, someone says, oh, you did the best thing for me. I'm so grateful. And you can say, well, I'd be grateful if you would help me out by telling the planet by mm -hmm. leaving a review. I also recommend uh, turning this link into a QR R code. If you're Canva peeps, uh, Canva users, that's very easy to do. But even at having at the uh, point of purchase, if you're a brick and mortar, if you're a service provider, you can maybe have a business card with the QR code, but that makes it very easy for people. And there's also a place to add updates and those are called posts. So uh, I will now start talking a little bit faster. So. <laughs> This is the anatomy of a Google business profile. I touched on this earlier, but you get one primary category, choose wisely. And unfortunately, Google doesn't have every category that we would like it to have. Uh, and mostly it pertains to service businesses and brick and mortars, but you can also have nine additional categories. So I wouldn't pick the planet, but Pick something that is truly is a service you provide because I promise you, your competitors are doing the same thing. Um, service area, you actually get to have 20 of them. So get extremely granular. It could be a zip code. It could be a village or a town name. It doesn't have to be, for example, Denver Metro. It could be all the little neighborhoods around. Um, in your description, please don't put some gobbledygook that like, it's very flowery language that might be on a website. Use words your consumers will understand, like financial planners. Don't say things like paving the way to your future of you know stress-free blah. I would say things like we offer life insurance and 401ks and whatever those things are that consumers are looking for. And I would mention the geographic areas in your description. Photos and videos. I cannot say enough about this part of a Google business profile. This is what, and I'm gonna just jump to a graphic, which is why I'm not in presenter mode because I might skip around like right now. Um, basically what this graphic is telling us is there is a relationship between the amount of photos you have in your Google business profile and your discoverability. So I would absolutely don't put in 100 today. You must feed the beast. My secret sauce is three a week, uh, but it's super important. Um, so posts. These are, these are, this is the update section. There are three types of them. There is just your traditional update. These do last for seven days. There is an event post, which will last for the entirety of your event and offer posts, which by the way, are the sizzling hot thing I'm gonna get to next slide as I'm watching the clock tick down. Mm -hmm. um, and social media links, which we touched on earlier, brand new. So if you were to say to me, oh, I hate social media, I don't do it, I, I don't see the point of it. Well, if you ever needed a reason, this is the point of it. Um, 
I would put in your business, Facebook page, your LinkedIn, uh, personal and company page, um, wherever you are, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, all the things I and then also make sure you're posting there. That's that's for another webinar altogether. OK, some hot tips here. One, fill out the services you offer and pick the ones that Google lists first, then customize yours if you have additional services that Google doesn't have as a pre-filled out item. Pictures are, again, the lifeblood. If you're stuck, uh, and by the way, and I'm sure uh, the gentleman, Chris, who takes pictures and virtual tours as a Google provider, will tell you this, it's very important to take exterior photos. Where will consumers be coming to? Interior photos, so they uh, are comfortable with whatever your environment is. And things of you at work. And I realize financial services, bookkeeping, insurance, these might be more challenging to do. However, there are so many creative ways to take pictures of your happy client with their first home, um, meeting with a client in the office. Joyce, we could take a screenshot today before we're all done <laughs> uh, in, in the meeting. So the other big dealio, this is new-ish. Video is now very important for ranking and it also gets served up in search results. It used to be there was a time limitation a few weeks ago, there isn't now. It just needs to be 75 megabytes or smaller. Uh, and there are professional tools that you can uh, shrink the size of a video. It will probably affect the quality and Google doesn't like fuzzy or things you can't see, but just know 75 megabytes is your jam. All right. You are 220. I don't know if there was a couple more things you want to. I'm going to, sure well, on. I did want to cover this and unfortunately. Yeah, go ahead. No, it's okay. Uh, we could even run over a little bit and people can stay. So go ahead. Okay. So uh, the hottest things going right now. And when I say hot, I, I spend at least an hour or two every day studying this space. But all of this stuff came up Thursday and Friday of last week, most of it anyway. So offer posts, even if you, you know, it's like you do an introductory meeting for free with a client, make that an offer. Offer posts are really hot right now. Mm. Um, reviews, again, are like you should incorporate a strategy in your business to ask for them. Okay, this one's Brandy Spanking, new. Encourage clients to leave reviews with photos and now videos and to use emojis. I was shocked over the weekend that I've been using emojis in posts for a long time, but man, it seems like we've taken text messaging to the rest of the world in everything we do, but emojis are a thing. Um, I learned this this weekend. This is the only time I will use the Google Maps app, but you can actually caption a photo in Google Maps by uh, uploading to, and I'll show you one. This is so ridiculous. Um, this is my profile and eat the brand <laughs> unicorn toast. And there is my caption. When your logo is a emoji unicorn, you must have unicorn avocado toast. So these are getting more traction in Google business profile. Don't ask me why. It just, it's a thing right now. And the biggest takeaway I'm going to give you today, do not, please, for the love of everything you hold near and dear, do not use stock photos of any kind, anywhere, in your Google business profile. Google's actually starting to remove these now. It's a violation of their terms of service, but more importantly, it's not authentic to your business. Um, I see a lot of folks that have tools that people post, make their updates, their posts using stock. And I, I wanna say it's not that consumers don't, consumers are real smart. They know if that, 
It's not you. It's not your business. It's not your customers. Don't do it. And then this is a, this is a, has been a thing this year and it will be continue to be a thing unless Google turns the world upside down, which it's been known to do. Having a location page on your website. So if Denver is your service area, it doesn't even have to be visible to the universe. It doesn't have to be in your uh, menus on your website, but do have a location page on your website with the area that you serve on your Google business profile. I'm done. Okay. Ah. So I'm going to leave the, is it okay? I think I'll pull off the um, search. Hang on. Well, I'll stop sharing. So we okay. Can see. But I want to just go back to what well, people can have whatever view they want. We've, we've got a good five minutes, at least for questions Would people just like to just either raise your hand like that or use the electronic hand raising Jennifer and then Lori and then Kim and then Jay. Okay, we'll start with Jennifer. I just want to make sure that I'm understanding. So I'm, um, I don't have a physical product. Well, I do. I have a book that I sell. I do workshops. I do, um, I'm probably going to be doing an online course uh, and I do a blog. Does, does it make sense for me to have a Google page? Where do you do your uh, groups? The workshops. Workshops. Primarily in Wisconsin, but I'm- There's the answer to your blog. question. Okay. There's the answer to your question. The answer is yes. Okay. If you have okay. a local relationship, even though a lot of things you do may be considered virtual, the answer is yes. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, I'm gonna move over to Laura Dubois and then Kim. Okay, I'll be real quick on the, and this is kind of an unfair question, but if you, I think most of us are probably saying, oh my God, I have a list of 80 things that I'm not doing right that I need to do and all of that. If you could say one thing that's like the most important, like if you've been ignoring your profile, what's the most effective thing you could do right away? Well, one, I would go through like your business hours, holiday hours, your service area, your category. So that's, like part A. Part B is upload some images and try and do a post once a week. But I would say images are the everything. Okay. Secret sauce. Okay, okay. so next Thank will be you. Kim, then Jay, and then Chris Mann. So Kim? Yes. Um. So I currently have uh, apparently two business listings. One was removed Maybe because I had two or maybe because originally I had a P.O. box. I don't know the reason. Um, and, and so I've been working on the one that is visible. I'm wondering if I should just delete the other one or is there a way to do that? Oh, this is a complicated question that I was hoping I wouldn't get today because. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm awfully glad you asked it. I'm I am reticent to answer your question because, again, I stay current on everything that's happening. There are very specific new ways to A, migrate a page, B, um, if it's a brandy spanking new page, then everything, if it's the same business type, then every review and everything else isn't going to come with if you just delete it and start over again. So yeah, there are and very... I can't see if there were reviews. So that I was trying to look in that one that's that's been removed and I can't tell if there were reviews in there if either. If it's gone, gone, uh, and, it, and you it's... haven't tried to get it reinstated, uh, and if you didn't have a lot of reviews, then a new thing is fine. But if you have okay. a lot of you know, folks who are praising you for three or five years, then there are some very specific steps, but not okay. for this forum. Okay. okay. Before we go to the last Thank two you. people, or maybe more, I'm going to quick draw a name so people don't have to drop off. And that person is Marla Press. She's the winner. <laughs> of the review of the Yay. Google. Thank you so much. Google. Appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I want to make sure to help. So Jay had a question and Chris Mann, I think the two hands I seen. Jay, did you have something else you want to ask? Make sure to unmute. I don't want to seem negative, but my but a serious question is 
is this really worth it for a company like mine that's entirely virtual, that does have a P.O. box and doesn't want to give my home address and that has a worldwide audience? I, my services don't need to be local in any way. I have customers from all over and I'm not going to publish. I'm not going to post. And I don't want to read reviews from people because they can write a bad review that has nothing to do with my service and blame my company for it. So I don't want people reading things like that. Unless I can edit the reviews and and block reviews that are bad, I, I don't even want to promote people writing reviews of my company. Because they could there could be a hundred great reviews and then one person can write a review like that and I'll get blown out of the water. I, I don't know if this is worth my effort. Uh, without really knowing exactly, like this is a full-on discovery appointment because... I know you say you manage apartment buildings, but no, I'm no, not... that's no, that's somebody no, else. That's this not is me. Jay. Oh, sorry, he's that's a, not me. he's internet. I sell, I sell internet services. People can yeah, buy them internet. from anywhere in the world. Well, and there is and, no store. And you don't fit into the category of Google Business Profile without a local presence, so I wouldn't worry about it. And you also yeah. mentioned that there should be a product or some kind of merch. I don't sell anything no, like that. No, I didn't. I what I said is even if you are a service area provider that qualifies under Google's rules to have a Google business profile, I encourage you to have the product area filled out, even though you don't think of your at oneself okay. as a product. I think we kind of got probably okay, Jason got Kennedy. Okay, well thank you. On. Cool. You're and Chris welcome. Mann, would you Chris, do you want to ask your question, please? Yes. Um I have two questions actually. Um they're probably both pretty simple. Uh, but the first one is, what is an offer post like you were talking about? And the second, if you want me to ask that real quick. Oh, or... yeah, sure. Okay. The second is, I heard that Google is extremely picky. Um, and the things that I've done with Google, they have been very picky with me. Um, they have told me basically don't play around with your account too much. Um, do you do that? Or am, am I misinterpreting what they're talking about? Um all right, so let's take take the offer post question and then we'll ta talk about changing everything on your profile in one session. Okay. So uh, one, offer posts are, let's say you're a clothing boutique and you're having some kind of Black Friday special or something like that. Uh, then you would create an offer post with you know 50% off your purchase for whatever time period and so on and so forth. If you're what I was referring to earlier, um, I've created offer posts for myself. And that is uh, book a free session to talk about Google posts. It's a made up kind of thing. It's something that I would do with discovery with the client for free anyway. But the perception is it is of value and it's an offer. I'm offering 15 minutes mm -hmm. of time. So that's what I meant by offer post. So I hope that's clear. Yes, um, I do not recommend, just like I said earlier, you know, photos, I think are the most important photos, videos, the most important thing to drive your profile. I would not upload 101 day. I When you're setting up your profile, you have to get verified. And after verification, you can start doing things. But I often don't make all of those changes in one sitting um, be, for the very reason that you, uh, because every time you make an edit, you'll see like Google needs 10 minutes to make that edit live or look at it or have AI look at it or the robot or I'm not sure what. But I don't recommend like filling out every gosh darn thing in one session or changing a lot of things in one session. Wait a couple of days, then do the next thing. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, we are just over the time. Um, so I'm going to um, just wrap it up and I guess recording, wrap up the recording. We